Hi, welcome to Gemstone Tarot, Friday 6th of March. 6th of March, wriggle. 2020, Valentine joins us. She's having a wash, aren't you, sweetheart? She's getting ready to find her spot. Say hello, sweetie. She's like, I will not. I will not. Oh, there you go. You got a quick, a quick eyes hello. We are using the vice versa tarot because I don't know. I can't. Oh. Oh wow. Okay. The tower. Let's see if it comes out again, though. I know. <laughs> Nice. Do check out the March readings. They're on the channel. Oh, that's nice. Oh, and that. Oh, the moon and the world. We're not messing about today. There's some spiritual big jobs. I can feel it. Right. That hanged man keeps coming up as well. Here it is, the world, look at that, that is a nice version, apologies if you can hear rum rumbling outside, there suddenly seem to be men in yellow jackets looking like they're going to do something noisy and inconvenient <laughs> in the road, so let's hurry up, okay. I'm going to stir it up, I'm going to do reversals on the vice versa tarot where you don't do reversals because it's supposed to be reversed on the back. Because Mercury's retrograde, so we can do what we want. We can flip it and then unflip it and then whatever. That came up in the um, shuffle as well. Oof. Oof. A woof and an oof. A woof mixed together. And I think there's an H in there. A woof. <laughs> right, okay, I've got to work out what that even is. Is that the Nine of Swords? I know, it must be. No, it's not. It's just, oh my God, Gemma, it's justice. <laughs> if you play with fire in Mercury, you will get blown over by wind. Here we go, justice, okay? Interesting version of justice. And there's the sort of tools of the justice trade. You've got the sword and you've got the scales, but they've been dismantled. They've kind of been folded away, okay? And then this, which I love, which is the six of swords. There's something a bit kind of like, I don't know, Lord of the Ringsy about it. Look at the back. In the upright. So it's like a kind of a sort of a getaway in a way. The thing with the Six of Swords is, you know, you take yourself with you where you go, but you still at least get to go there, you know? It's moving away from kind of troubled water. Troubled water. Now, Seven of Swords in reverse. And this has that fairground jester guy, doesn't it? Making off with the swords while everybody else is distracted by candy floss and whatever else you do at fairgrounds. There's the back. That's in reverse. Past misdemeanours. The world, of course, overall kind of energy card is entire karmic cycles. This feels like a karmic cycle. So it may pertain to today. It may not, it may be for longer, it may be for the retrograde, I don't know, I don't think it matters, but it's making me itch myself. Okay, we have the hermit in reverse. There's been time spent internally, there's been time trying to puzzle this out. There may have been actual physical time spent alone. And it looks like we're gonna pop out of the other end of that with some kind of clarity, with some kind of justice, with some kind of rebalance. I mean, notice with justice, she, and it nearly always is a she, has this, you know, sort of truth, but also balance, like fairness, taking accountability of your part in something and someone else's part in something. So whose part was the Seven of Swords then? <laughs> 
I don't know. But remember we have the six and the seven of swords. I like it, but there's some kind of, there is a slight sense of impatience and confusion about it. We have the five of wands in the reverse, which is a good card to get into the, in reverse. It means there's an entanglement, there's a tissue of something, there's enmeshment and it becomes freed, you know? It becomes able to flow again. We also have down here at the bottom, I mean, that just looks like a bad Photoshop, to be honest, doesn't it? Yeah. But anyway, we'll forgive it because we love this tarot. Well, I do. Four of Wands. Okay, now this is in the reverse. And for some of you, it's about... It's something about a connection with somebody or something. And there seems, you know, when you get the King of Cups, because we also have the King of Cups here. He's like gone from the page to the knight to the king of something. It's a big mature offer of some kind or other, but it, I can't quite put my finger on it at all. It seems to have history and be new at the same time. But also I feel like, do you know with the, with lots of the uh, more Rider Waite tarots, the world is Oiroboros, the snake that eats itself in my beginning is my end. And that whole perpetual cycle of coming in and out of something. It feels like the misdemeanours of the past, uh, whether caused by us, someone else, or usually as it is both of us, um, feed into what happens in the future. And there's a sense of justice about it. But, you know, Justice isn't a Disney film, is it? It's not, well, it was bad and now it's good, you know? Ha ha! Doesn't really work like that. It's Karma is more of a... Um, it's more intricate and it's more felt and it's quite human and that probably means it's messier. So, it feels like a sort of divine mess. I don't want Brian and Wendy Frood. I want one of these. I want Wisdom of the Hidden Realms. It's a divine mess sort of being sorted out. That came up yesterday. High Lord of Gratitude and Service is selflessness. Humility, conscious action. And I feel like this is taking accountability of our own actions. That's coming up a lot in this reading. Now, the Seven of Swords can be, not that you were sneaky with somebody, but actually you were, you were acting in a kind of perspicacious and political way. In other words, you had to be secretive about something. Yeah, look, we get the Arrow Master hitting the mark with intention and detachment. There's something here that you want or that wants you. But it's a bit of a sort of round the houses way of getting it. But nevertheless, although I feel, you know, like with some readings, there's a beginning, middle and an end. This one just seems to be a middle, you know. I feel like there's more to the story than this. But nevertheless, I do like it. Yeah, that card, I love that card. The River Queen. Flow and letting go. And natural movement and we are still in Pisces season that's a very Piscean card that whole um, notion of flow and current oh valley booth settled there she is that's her spot oh Chuck Spetsano healing cards <laughs> We get the victim card of revenge. I think a lot of this, and it could be to do with family, friends, it doesn't, you know, it resonates how it resonates. A lot of this is working out who's on the outside and who's on the in, who's in the know. Who's on the thin ice, you know, and who's in relative safety but still feeling cold and a bit pushed out, okay? I don't think there's a good, like I said, I don't think there's a good and a bad. I don't think there's a goodie and a baddie in this situation. I think there just is, you know, the dynamic. But it looks like it's in a karmic 
wheel, which is beginning and ending and beginning and ending. And maybe you've been around this a few times before, okay? Oof, strange reading. No wonder I woofed at the beginning. Leave me, <laughs> leave me a comment. Let me know how it resonates and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you tomorrow. Namaste.